I heard a person say this. He said, once you can get in somebody's mind, you get in their heads, then you own them. Don't let nobody own you. Nobody owns you. Nobody. Don't give them your mind. Hey everybody, welcome back for more tips and scripts for successful living. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to the channel if you've never been here before. I'm so glad to have you. Um, I want to share with you something, you know, um, it's a video I did just the other day. It's called, it's a special message that the Lord placed upon my heart. It's about 20 something minutes long. And I know that a lot of people don't have the, the patience to really listen to a video that long, but I really want you to watch it. If you have not watched it, I put it in the description box. So please follow up with that. Um, after you watch this video, you'll understand where I'm coming from and how the Lord has placed it upon my heart to continue to stay and talk about um, uh, mindsets, mindsets, and, and making a decision to change our mindsets, uh, to really even just look at our minds. You know, what kind of mindset do you have? You got to have a mindset. If you are a Christ follower, your mindset should be to follow Christ. That's what our minds should be set on, following Christ, following his teachings, following his commands, obeying his commands, not the world. We can't have one foot in the world and one foot in the word. It just does not mix. It's oil and water. The word of God and the world is like oil and water. They will never mix. I want to start today's video, um, and I hope you'll stick around. It won't be very long. I want to start with Romans 12, 2. Romans 12, 2 because this is so important. And I know that it is because the Lord won't ease up off of me to talk about it. It's something that is really on my heart and apparently it's on his too. So Romans 12, two, and it says, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Do not be conformed to this world. Do not be conformed to this world. I, I'm just going to hang my hat on this right here because I can just easily see that there's going to be another video about our mindset. The first thing is do not be conformed to the pattern of this world. If you go up a verse, it actually says to present your bodies. It says in Romans 12, one, I got to go there. I beseech you therefore, Brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, set apart, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. God expects us to set ourselves apart from the world. We cannot be a Christ follower and follow the world's way. And the world's way, the way you follow it is by aligning your mind with it aligning your ways with it. Paul is begging people. We don't conform no longer to the pattern of this world. This world will kill you. This world will lead you straight to hell. It will actually even cause you to be living in hell. And then you don't even understand why it seems like everything is going to hell in your life, but it, it, it very well could be because you have not yet conformed to the word's way and you're trying to continue to follow the world's way. The world's way is death. And the thing here that I want to stress in this video is you can have a caged mind, a caged mind. That video I did the other day, uh, talking about victim mentality, that is a caged mind. Um, I did a devotional, wrote a devotional so, so many years ago about having a caged mind. I will not read it because I, it's actually three parts, uh, but it, it, you can have a caged mind and don't even realize it because we get so caught up in the world's way of doing things. What do I mean about a caged mind? 
<laughs> okay, I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to give you an example. You know, the Israelites, when they were brought out of Egypt and they were slaves, the whole, the people were slaves for 400 years or more in Egypt to Pharaoh. Well, they had been enslaved. They were literally in a cage um, but it wasn't necessarily a physical cage, but in some ways you could see that it was, they were slaves. If you are a slave, you cannot do the way you want to do. You don't have the freedom to move and go and come and go as you please. You're literally in a unboxed cage, but a cage nonetheless. A caged mind though, is when they were taken out of Egypt by Moses, went through the sea, Red Sea on dry land, saw all of this stuff that God did, the wonders of God. They were fed in the desert with food coming from heaven, food coming from the sky. Can you imagine food coming from the sky? Reminds me when I was little, I digress just a little bit. It won't be too long. But anyway, you know, when you the snow coming, and I know some places, some, you know, some of you may live in places where we have seen a lot of snow, some places up north uh, in Alabama, we don't get much snow. But anyway, when I was a kid, Growing up uh, in Indiana, I would open my mouth and the snow would, you know, snowflakes. But anyway, I digress. Uh, but anyway, back on a serious note, back on a serious note, um, God fed the manna from heaven, gave them meat to eat, the quail. I mean, he took care of them. But when it came time to get to the promised land, they said, you know what? We out here in the desert, we going to die. Moses had went up to the mountain to get the Ten Commandments and he'd been gone forever in a year. Where is he? You know what? We just need to create our own God and we're going to create our own culture and we're going to do what we do. We're not going to be out here just, you know, lollygagging and, and just waiting on him. We're going to we're going to we're going to create our own thing here, our own culture, our own way of doing things by God. And, you know, that's what they did. Well, when he came down, some of them, they were mad, you know, and of course Moses was angry and it was like, what are y'all doing? You know, Aaron was down there. He lost his mind. It was like, what in the world are you doing? Well, they had made that golden calf and they said, you know what? We made a God for ourselves. In other words, we decided to do things the way we wanted to do. We didn't no longer want to be holy. We didn't no longer wanted to just, you know, abide by this God that apparently has abandoned us, apparently, you know, and I'm just kind of making this up, but you can imagine some people were thinking, you know, were you the favor? You always up there with them. You didn't forgot about us and left us down here. So we just going to make our own God because apparently that God, the God that we've been saying and serving. And then, you know, he, 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 he delivers us, but then he delivers us to the desert to die. Well, you know what? We just, you could have just left us in Egypt to die. That's a caged mind. Their bodies, they were free. They had been delivered from the hands of Pharaoh, but the hands of Pharaoh was around their minds. They were still dealing with a caged mind. We can have a caged mind. Let me tell you somebody who did not have a caged mind. And that was Daniel. I talked about him in the other video, Daniel. Daniel 1.8 says, but Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's delicacies, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the chief of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Daniel purposed in his heart. He made up his mind. I will not do what you want me to do in this new world that you have brought me to. Yes, you can, you can, Cause me to be a eunuch. You can take my manhood. You can, you can tell me I'm supposed to do this and tell me that. And you give me work to do. And I, and I know I'm not free like that. I can come and go as I please. I know that I'm in the dungeon. I, I can't do nothing. I, I got my own, you know, I can't do nothing the way I used to. But one thing you cannot take from me is my mind and my mind and my heart has been set to serve the Lord. I will not desecrate. I will not defile myself. I, I will be holy. I want to do what's acceptable to God. I will not conform to your world. This is what we got to do. This is what we have to do. We have to get out of this mindset of, I got to go along in order to get along and in order to get ahead. That is a caged mind way of thinking. It is a survivalist 
way of thinking. God did not create you to be in this world just to survive, but to thrive. And I'm encouraging you like Paul, I am begging you. I am begging you because let me tell you something, just a personal testimony. I know what it's like to feel like you're in a cage, to feel like you're not free, to feel like you're trapped, to be in a situation, a relationship, a situation on a job. There are all types of scenarios that I can present where you can feel like you are just trapped. You're in a cage. You can, you can go and you can, you know, it's not like somebody's beating you per se, but your mind, it's like it can wear on you over time and you wind up feeling like you just can't break free. My friend, you can. And I just want to encourage you to not allow yourself to think that anybody can keep you down. No one can keep you bound. No one. It is up to you. It may take some time. It may be that you may have to be even like Daniel and the three Hebrew boys. It may not be something you can necessarily even escape from physically. However, stay in prayer because I'm not sure all who I'm talking to and who might run across this video certainly don't want anybody to be bound in chains literally or to be a slave because that kind of stuff still goes on today. But Daniel and the three Hebrew boys, they were physically bound, but they decided, you know what? I will not have a caged mind. And things may be in this world, in this society, and the way things are, the economy, our work, our money, it may not be flowing the way we need it to flow to make it in this, 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 this wicked world. You don't have to conform to it in order to uh, succeed. You do not have to be like it in order to get all you can out of it. I'm encouraging you to please take the advice of Daniel. Do what he did. Let's do what he did. Let's do, let's do what those three Hebrew boys did. Let's make up our minds and say, I will not, I will not. No, you may have me where I got to be like this right now, but my mind, my mind is on what God says, but my mind is on the fact that I am free. Who the son says free is free indeed. I will not have a caged mind. I will not have a victim mentality. I will succeed. And you know what? Let me tell you something. Daniel and the three Hebrew boys, because of their decision, to not conform to the world that they had been put in because see, we're in this world, but we're not to be of it. And we're in this world. It doesn't mean that we have to do like the world does in order to get ahead. Daniel and the three Hebrew boys, God showed them favor. He even made it so that the chief, the chief of the eunuchs and the King Nebuchadnezzar himself, he, they were like, you know what? That their God is God because you know why? Because they said in their hearts, our God is God. And we know that he's God. You may be a king, but we serve a high king, the king of all kings. And we will not bow down. We will not conform to this world. You may have us bound, but you don't have our mind. You will not have my mind. My encouragement to you, don't let anybody cage your mind. Don't let anybody cage your mind for yourself. You can do that in your mind. And even though it may feel like everything around you is closing in on you and that you feel bound and you feel like you can't go no further and you feel like you're just trapped, you don't have to be trapped in your mind. Once you renew your mind using the word of God to do so, you will, you will be free even in, if you're not necessarily free. Because Daniel and the three Hebrew boys, they knew that they were still free even though they weren't free. It's a mind thing. Once I heard a person say this, he said, once you can get in somebody's mind, you get in their heads, then you own them. Don't let nobody own you. Nobody owns you. Nobody. Don't give them your mind. Don't 
surrender to a caged mind. You can create a cage for your mind. Based upon things that you have learned in this world, don't allow yourself to stay there, my friend. Let me tell you this, Proverbs 16, 7. When a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. So seek to please the Lord. Present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, separated from the world and its way and its way of thinking. And he will show himself strong in your life. He will make your enemies bow down to you. I ain't got time to tell you much about Joseph, but go and read about the story of Joseph and how his brothers threw him in a pit and then they wound up having to bow down to him. Okay, all right, I might do that on the next video. But until next time, listen, y'all have a wonderful day. Remember, free your mind. You don't have to bow down. You don't have to um, cow down. You just need to bow down to the King of Kings and he will set you free because who the sun sets free is free indeed. Amen. Amen. Listen, I'll see you on the next video. Take care of yourself. Bye now.